Thank you for joining me today on the five minute cl of PGX Clinical Pearl. My name is Bana Sarami. I'm the pharmacist and medical science liaison for ID Genetics. Today we're going to be talking about ABCB1 gene. So, this ABCB1 gene actually codes for an efflux system called PGP or permeability glycoprotein. It's kind of like a defense mechanism for the body where it spits out medications or toxins when it's ingested. So, it's like a transporter sitting on cell membrane. And let's say we ingest the medication, it actually spits it out, or it's well, that's why it's called efflux system. So they're everywhere in the body, but it's mostly concentrated in the gut and the brain. So the gut, because before medication gets into your blood system, it's trying to protect it from, from that, which is why it's in the gut. And in the brain, obviously, before medication actually gets in your brain, it tries to spit that out. So it's, it's great in that aspect. However, when you're expecting to take a 20 milligram or 40 milligram of med medication, that bioavailability of that medication is decreased because of this um, this efflux system. So that's uh, that's why sometimes actually the ABCB1 gene is also called multi-drug resistant protein. It was discovered because a lot of patients that were taking chemotherapy medications they they were seeing that there's not a lot of effect of that medic the chemotherapy happening, and because it was spitting, it was because of this efflux spitting out system. So sometimes you'll see verapamil, which is a blood pressure medication combined with chemotherapy medications to be able to block this efflux system and absorb the medications. So you'll see here the blood brain barrier and the middle cell membrane and the PGP glycoprotein. So a lot of the antipsychotic medications or antidepressants, they're lipophilic. They are fat loving, so they can kind of cross this barrier very easily, like with passive diffusion. Some other ones actually need a transporter to cross over. So the medications you'll see on the with the green, like citalopram, paroxetine, nortriptyline, these are not a comprehensive list, but these need the PGP glycoprotein to as transporter. They cannot cross on their own. However, that means there that also means there are substrates for the PGP glycoprotein. So that means they are actually going to be effluxed out. So these medication will not, you will not see the full effect or the bioavailability can be decreased. Versus the medications that are in the red, like fluoxetine, mirtazapine, bupropion, they don't use the efflux system. So they can actually accumulate in the brain. So the way that the way you would see this or interpret this in a PGX report is when you see your ABCD1 gene actually functioning efficiently, that means your bioavailability of certain medications can be lower. Versus if you have a, your ABCD1 gene variant and it's not working as efficiently, then that means you're actually having an increased absorption of that medications or the bioavailability is as you expected based on the dose that you're giving. So, however, this is another small piece of the puzzle we're going to be looking at. So when you're looking at a PGX report and you want to find out, let's say, for example, a paroxetine or fluoxetine, uh, the absorption or how a patient is using it or when you're doing a PGX report, you've got to look at the SIP enzymes like 2C19 or 2D6. You can look at the ABCB1 gene. You can look at SLC6A4. So knowing the power of combining all these to make clinical decision is key. Thanks for joining me. Tune in next time.